tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. Um, for my last episode for this season, I invited two uh, two very special guests. Um, they have projects that they have projects that focus on the Moreno Morena um, advocacy. So they're kind of well known in their community, and I'm really excited to get to know them more. To get to know um, more about what they do and why they pick this advocacy in the first place. So um, let's get to know our first guest. I have with me today Juro Onkiko. So he is um, the one who handles Morena, Moreno Morena. Um, can I have Juro on screen? There's Juro. Hi, Juro. Hi, nice hi Rika. Hi, nice to meet you. Hello, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for also yeah, thanks uh, for me. being um, on my show. Um, okay, so um, yeah, no tell me something about yourself. Um, where did you uh, graduate from and what you're currently doing now? Okay, I graduated from UP Diliman with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Psychology in 2016. and. I've been a freelance photographer from 20, 2017 to today. And I sometimes DJ. And what? yeah, so far I've been working on Morena Morena for like three years. <laughs> why 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 do you react that way? <laughs> well, I don't know. Well, okay. I only know about the whole Morena Morena thing. So yeah. um <laughs> yeah. but being a DJ. So how is that um working for you now? Uh, like being a DJ, it's pretty bad, <laughs> but that's not my main thing. It's my, it's more of like a, a side outlet to get, I don't know, all the work stress away. But yeah, everything else is fine. DJ stuff, not so, not so good, but everything else is good. Why did you decide to pursue photography? Oh, okay. Um, that's a good question, and I, I like changing my answer every time. But then, so far, <laughs> photography because I've always been in love with doing creative stuff. I think ever since high school, whether it be a graphic design or photography, not so much traditional art, but like digital art. Yeah, I was really into that. And in college, I got into psychology because I thought it would have been a good course to, uh, like, a good foundation for advertising. Mm -hmm. For advertising jobs, when I graduated, I I didn't have much good luck, and then so yes, yeah, so after months of trying to apply to different kinds of agencies, um, yeah, photography was a I think I think you can call it like a last a last effort to try to see if I could make make it as a working fresh grad. So yeah, that just carried out and all all the way until now. Okay. Yeah. But then it was a unexpected. I mean, you're um you're doing pretty well, <laughs> um as a photographer. I would see your photos again. I I, I follow you, talaga. <laughs> so um I follow Morena Morena. So kind of three years ago. The I started it late 2016. I think it was December November. And. Uh, I wanted to make a portfolio of my photography and graphic design work. Mm -hmm. And when I was trying to formulate, like I was thinking of this during the school year, the school year where I graduated. And yeah, I, 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 I tried to come up with an idea that I wouldn't mind working on a lot because I knew since it's my portfolio for potential clients, I would have to work on it for a really long time. And then yeah, I just thought, like what's something I knew well, what's something I I could get into without much research. And so yeah, being dark was one of those things. Yeah, and I thought it was a pretty easy topic for me to tackle as a portfolio project. And yeah. Um I just remembered earlier like more of the background of Morena Morena. Mm -hmm. I think a big factor that came into me deciding on dark skin was 
the short documentary video I saw, I think it was Vox on YouTube. Mm-hmm. They did a piece about how film cameras back then weren't very flattering for dark-skinned people. So usually when you take a, a film photo of someone, the darker skin tones are usually washed out. You can't see the people properly. And it really yeah, favored the lighter-skinned or fair-skinned people way more. So yeah, I thought to myself, what if I had something the opposite of that? What if I could uh, depict dark-skinned people in in a really flattering way? What if I made dark skin the, the highlight of the photo? So yeah, yeah, that was a pretty good insight. And then from there on, it evolved into Miranda Miranda eventually. I okay, I need to watch that video. I'm I'm so curious. I never knew that. Um, that was. That, that's pretty that, okay now i really understand people to feature on moreno morena maybe we could talk about that when I, yeah when i started out the people i would feature were just friends from school or mm-hmm. friends from other circles mm-hmm. and eventually i think as i got to progress with my freelance photography work i was able to get access to i was able to meet other models like people who would professionally be able to do like editorial stuff because yeah the main product i guess you could call it the marina marina is the like editorial style photos so yeah, that the freelance photography work helped out a lot in getting to know like makeup artists uh stylists and other photographer peers Okay. Yeah. Do you have photos um, that you would want to share? I think we do. Maybe we could yes. um, show I the photos. Um, yeah. You can follow Moreno Moreno yeah. on Instagram. They're on Instagram. And you're on Facebook too, right? Mm, yeah, I'm on okay. Facebook. And yeah, okay. I'll just give some background on the photos that yeah. we're showing. Okay. So what's this about year one? This was uh, like a collage of all the portraits I took on the first year of Moreno Morena. So from, when did I say, uh, December 2016 to, I think around December 2017. Yeah, that, that was around 40 plus people I was able to take photos of. And then I made use of this very strong art direct art style which I, I, I really don't want to say I stole it, but then it's pretty much I stole it from yeah, an art, art director who is very well known for his very strong style, very severe and intensely contrasted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with the colors in the black and white. Very makes a statement. Yeah, it does, it does. I like it. I really like it. Okay, sorry, I'm really fangirling right now. Okay, um, what other photos okay. do we have? <laughs> Okay. This was, I think this was my first one for this year. Or I don't okay. know, it's, it's been really crazy, the, the timing of everything. Mm-hmm. I think this was earlier this year or sometime last year. Mm-hmm. Might have been earlier this year. This is Reg and Bea. Mm-hmm. Where, and I shot this in my Lola's house. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Nice. I don't know. Not, not really much. Not really much reason behind it. Just like some editorial thing. Okay, so um, what do they do? Yeah, the the title for this one. Oh no, they're just school friends. Okay. Yeah, but they they pulled it off pretty well. Okay. Sorry, what was the title of this um photo? The title for this one was Girl Boss. Ooh. Okay. Uh, because, <laughs> because because yeah, it's girls in suits. It's it's, it's not. I don't know. But yeah, I'm pretty proud of this one. I like this one. Yeah, I think I see, I saw this recently. Okay, next. Ooh. Oh, wow. I like this one too. This one is... I think I had it back here. The home home studio. Home studio. Okay. This is Martina and Jovic. Mm-hmm. We did... I kind of wanted to do something more close up. More really focused on the skin color yeah. and yeah they don't i don't know how strong their tans were that day but then yeah I, I made it in such a way that i highlighted the dark skin made it 
I don't know if it's flattering for some people, but then for me, I want to see how far I could push dark skin. I don't know if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it's amazing, Jurong. I, I like this one. I like everything. You know. It's nice. Okay. This one. This one is also besides the editorial photos, I want more and more to be like a, a medium or a platform for people to explore that colorism, that prejudice of against dark skin. Mm -hmm. So I want to try to integrate some of my psych background into the project. So this is one of the attempts. Mm -hmm. I asked my Instagram followers, what was the worst or what have been some insults you've heard about your dark skin? So yeah, I, I got an overwhelming number of answers and then I, I compiled all of them and then I separated them into themes and then these, some of these photos on display are uh, illustrate some of those themes. But, um, I'm sure I, I we we spoke about this a while ago. Um, yeah. The in, before the interview, but um, I'm excited for what's in store for for what's next for Moreno Morena again being a a follower. Um, I can't wait to see um what you have for Moreno Morena. Thank you, Juro, for talking um about your yeah, advocacy. Where did you um, graduate from, Pala? I'm from USD. Ah, okay. What did you take up? I took up English. Yeah. That's oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then what do you do now? Uh, right now, I have my small business. I have a printing mm -hmm. business. So it's called Ideology Studio, where I mm -hmm. sell. Th that's where Morena, the label, is under. So it's like a, a merch line for creators. Mm-hmm. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Okay. You know what? Let's jump right into it. Because I'm really curious now that you mentioned you have your own small business and Morena mm -hmm. the label is under that. Um, let's talk more about Morena the label. So how did that start? All right. So Morena the label really started as my personal extension of a merch line because I started YouTubing around 20... 2017? No, no, 2016. And while I was growing my channel, I started creating more and more Morena content. So I had a lot of subscribers who were also Morenas who wanted to learn how to be more confident in their skin color. And so when I got to the point in my YouTube channel life where I thought it was an okay time to to start selling merch. I mm. didn't want to sell anything Ayin Bernos because it just didn't make sense to me <laughs> to have my name on merchandise. And so I thought, okay, what is one thing that my subscribers have in common and that I personally want to wear as well? And so that's how I started with Morena the label. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was just a personal, you know, I, I wanted to have it for myself and I wanted to make it available for those in my community. So that's kind of how it grew. And now here we are. So what made you um, start your whole YouTube channel? Well, I've always wanted to work in the media, you know, TV, broadcasting, like this, like what you do. But <laughs> I guess I, did, I never really found out the process of how to audition or how to make it happen. And so when I bought a camera, I just decided, OK, you know what? I'm going to start my own channel if if I can make the other stuff happen. So I started making my own videos. And it really just started as a passion, pro not even. It was just a hobby I did for fun. Okay. So the whole Morena thing was really a personal, it was from personal experience. I grew up really insecure about my skin color when I was a little kid. And I it took me quite some time, but I eventually got to that point in my confidence, self-esteem to accept what my skin color was and to be really happy with it. But then... Re, uh, after being on YouTube for a while and realizing how other people felt about their skin color, I realized that not everyone gets to grow out of it. And so I wanted to help with that. So that's why I started creating more YouTube videos, empowering mm -hmm. Morena girls, posting more pictures of myself with, mm -hmm. you know, my unedited or unfiltered Morena skin or and making making the statement t-shirts because 
Mm -hmm. it allowed people, I guess, to have that sense of belongingness because the Morena, the label is not about me at all. It's about anyone who wears our merch. Any that that's everyone's story. So, yeah, that's kind of how it started, and I still feel strongly about it, even though I've obviously overcome those insecurities. Mm -hmm. I understand that people still go through it, and what we want to do is really empower them so that they can have that confidence to pursue whatever it is. It doesn't have to be about the Morena skin. It's just about their general happiness, their general outlook in life. And we can help with that by helping them, you know, cultivate that confidence that has been missing because of colorism. So, mm -hmm. I love it. Well, you know, Juro and Ayin on screen. And maybe we could um, get to know a little more. Pa. So, hi, Juro and Ayin. Hello. Hi. <laughs> okay. Um, so, maybe you could share, like, an experience. Sure. I think a lot of times from the shoots I've been working on, even ones not related, even just not related to Morena Morena, okay. the makeup artist would comment on how lots of foundation don't, or lot, or they rarely find foundation that matches darker skin. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's that's something that comes up a lot. And I know, I'm not sure if there are any local makeup businesses that start to cater to darker skin, but I know there's a, there's like a demand for it and people are being more vocal about what they want to see mm -hmm. in terms of makeup or, yeah. yeah. Oh, I know, um, if I'm not mistaken, I know see si Vice Cosmetics ata is coming up. They, they're trying to um, find out what shades they could produce in terms of foundation. Mm -hmm. You know, a couple of years ago, uh, I was, I had this exact problem. Mm -hmm. I was, I, I have a foundation shade that I used from a, an international brand, which I got from Tita. And then I went back, I went to the mall and then I asked for that same shade because I knew that they carried that shade because it's, I, I bought it from them. And then the sales lady told me that they don't sell it in the Philippines. Sabi ko, what? Like, you don't sell this, this brown shade in the Philippines? Yeah. Why? And she told me because the, ano daw, the market daw doesn't like uh, brown shades. Tapos parang ko, what? That doesn't make sense because we're almost yeah. all brown here. So apparently, ang before to, like uh, maybe four years ago, mm -hmm. then yung attitude ng consumers towards makeup, we want to look whiter. So everything we put on, like something that's gonna make us lighter. Pero oh, now, yeah. nga, as Juro mentioned, there's a shift. People are becoming more vocal about what they want. And so brands are finally addressing that gap in the market. So as for local brands, I use uh, Elana Minerals Cosmetics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. They have shades darker than my skin tone, which is something that I never experienced before. Lagi kong problem yung ang puti puti na mukha ko. And then hindi siya match sa skin ko. So, ayun. Yeah, I think but that's a, that's a very good insight, Juro. Like, coming from a guy. Well, but then again. A photographer. So, alam, he knows, he knows. Um, how about you, Ayin? Uh, I think I I always go back to um, so I have a little cousin who is also Morena and one day I saw her Instagram she's like really young she's really young as in she's really young and then I saw in her bio uh, Morena so uh -huh. natuwa lang ako because she's a generation she's from another generation and she's Morena I remember when I was in when I was that age, I would not be openly saying to the world now, ah, I'm Morena, I'm proud. But she was. And this is because of more and more Morenas coming out and being more vocal about loving their skin color. Parang before, it was, if you're a Morena and you're proud, the re reception would be, wow, what a concept. What? Confident siya? Tapos maitim siya? It was different. Yeah. But now it's becoming more normal. And I think it's even more reason for us to continue what we do. 
because it really affects confidence. Eh? When you when you grow up with confidence versus when you grow up with low self esteem, your drive to go to to go after what you want it's affected. So the more confident Morenas we have, you know, the the more potential we see, the more dreams they go after, and I think it's really important. Why do you and, think confidence plays an important role in our lives? Do you guys have any thoughts on that? Confidence. <laughs> I, I think ano talaga, uh, when you by default look at yourself as equal, then you're more empowered to just do things, go after things. Whereas if by default you think you're inferior, even if it's totally unrelated, let's say this is all about public speaking. And mm-hmm. yung confidence mo is affected by not your public speaking skills, but your appearance. It will trend it will trickle into all the other parts of your life. And my it will affect all the other areas in your life. So it's really limiting if mm-hmm. you have a low self-esteem. Because you limit yourself. Like no one else is limiting you, no one else is telling you no, this is your limit or this is what you can't do but because you believe you're by default inferior then you don't go after those little things and you you know sometimes we think oh that's just a small thing that's a small opportunity but if you pile them up years and years of feeling like this it will really take a lot from you and your life so hopefully yeah that's what we want to do we want to boost people's confidence so that you know they can have the choice to to go after whatever it is that they want to do. I think the way I look at it with being these for having dark skin, uh, when I was, I think for another interview I did, I mentioned something about how having that pressure on you to fit a certain beauty standard and you uh, pushing, pushing back on the way you are, for example, You've been told your whole life that fair skin is more beautiful than dark skin, but you have dark skin. So mm-hmm. you grow up pushing back against that, yeah, just the way you are. And I think that's very tiring for a lot of people. Yes. Like you don't really, mm-hmm. you don't feel it like a physical kind of tire, tiredness. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like what Ayin said, it's something that gradually piles up and then it gets you in the end. And I think that the energy you spend fighting back against what you really are or, or something you can't change. Mm-hmm. I know it's it's unnecessary. It's something yes. that I don't know. I don't know why our generation has to deal with it. It it really has no benefit in the end. It's not benefiting anyone. Mm-hmm. It just becomes an avenue for people to an avenue for like a difference in power, I guess. Mm-hmm. It gives yeah. you a reason to like, put someone under you, which I don't think is fair because, like, having dark skin, you don't really have any control over that. Yeah. And yeah, it's just uh, in the end, the people it affects, they're trying, I'm trying to word it properly, they're trying to uh, like negotiate who they are, which I don't think should be a, a case. Because yeah. it's, it's much easier, much healthier, I think, to be happy with how you are already. If there's something you want to change, it shouldn't be because, like, the world is just against you. And I think that's yeah. Yeah, it's a very unfair thing that I've noticed about, yeah, the colorism and prejudice against people with dark skin. I think some designer who's showing Meryl Streep different belts, the, the similar-looking blue belts. Mm. And then Meryl Streep goes on this monologue about basically it, she says like how the the actions of very few people on top affect the masses like how Anne Hathaway picked that blue sweater cerulean sweater one of those yeah and then it, it made me think about like how it relates to colonialism and colorism because you could trace back the the teasing I got from like growing up in like grade school, high school, you could trace it all the way back to like the actions of a few men, the the people who came, maybe the Spanish colonization, the American colonization, and how their actions um, 
yeah, propagated the the bias towards dark skin and the preference for light skin. And I think that's it's kind of unfair. It's really unfair that how the actions of those few people on top trickle down, like not only through people, not only but also to like trickle down through generations. And how like why do I have to suffer because of what? Some white guy did how many how many <laughs> centuries ago? It's it's I don't know. It's stupid. There's no other way to it to, to put it. I think it's stupid. Yeah. But yeah, one one way we can unlearn uh, colorism is just by being aware of how I guess senseless or yeah. how baseless um, hating on dark skin is. It's really, yeah, preferent, like our knee jerk reactions to people with dark skin are all because of mm -hmm. these few people, how many mm -hmm. centuries ago and their preferences and how they like took, a, took advantage of Filipinos back then. And yeah, it's, it's very oppressive and it's very ingrained in our history and culture. So it's not gonna be hard to, I mean, it's not gonna be easy to unlearn, but it's definitely something we can unlearn and yeah. I think with the amount of support that our Moreno or Morena appreciation gets, it's it seems like it's going in a good direction. You the, both of the both of you, um, you're really taking a step forward, you know, really trying to empower the whole Moreno Morena commu community. I'm well, ako, how I see it naman now, um, parang people now are more accepting. You guys mentioned this now, which is um, which is pretty great. Um, there's progression somehow, there is. Um, pero before talaga, it, would, it was a different time back then. And if you can see it sa, ano eh, sa backstage, like you see... Uh, Morenas being pushed forward, pero meron paring means and mahikita mo parin. What I don't like is when brands halimbawa they promote Morena Pride and then they get a non Morena to spin up itim nila. So they still have the European features, they still look very mestiza, and then papa itim nila for Morena Pride, which is I'm I'm like. You're just tolerating. <laughs> Parang tina tolerate nyo lang kami on your terms. But like, mm -hmm. get someone real. So, I think hindi pa masyado distinguished yung difference. But, you know, working with brands nga. Parang, I can sometimes tell when they're really pushing for it versus using it as a marketing tool. And definitely, the being people being more vocal is helping. But I think it's gonna take more time na hindi lang siya dapat, uh, ano yan, like parang, what do you call this? Just just for shock factor. It's not just a shock factor. It needs to be normalized. Like uh, a beautiful morena, a confident morena should be a normal thing. It shouldn't be a shock factor. And right now, I think nasa shock factor pa tayo. We're like, wow, a confident morena, what a concept. Pero I think we're getting there. Because of this, you know, we're slowly getting there. But it's, it's still a long way to go, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good progress, yeah. though. Yes, so agree with that one. Yeah, when I shot one of one of the models from Rena Rena, see Angela, she mentioned how she isn't an advocate necessarily of dark skin, but she just wants to advocate um, being happy with yourself. Yeah. And I think that came from the inside of whenever she would post photos of herself, people would comment, "Oh, you're so brave of, of brave for being proud of your skin like that." But on her, on her on her end, she just wants to post a photo like everyone else. Why is it that whenever a dark-skinned person posts a photo, they have to be brave or they have to be like standing up or something? It's it's pretty dumb. Also, I don't know. I'm sorry. It's yeah. It's weird. It's weird. There's a there's a difference. Yeah, when when, when a fair-skinned person posts their photo, <laughs> they don't get the same kinds of praise or the same kinds of comments as someone who, if they were dark-skinned. Yeah, <laughs> I know so it's something funny. I want to look into. It's something I want to study. Then it's okay. interesting. Um, I learned a lot yeah. today. 
from you both. And daming facts nga na sinasabi ni Juro. And that's really um, that's really cool, really cool. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Um I'm actually so um grateful to have you both on my show, my season finale. <laughs> Same for last, diba? Thank you so much. Stay tuned for the next episode. Only here on Z81 Radio, Manila.